الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أسخر سبحانه وتعالى He wants us to feed, makes us of those who are guided and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us steadfast upon the Surat al-Mustaqeem uh, This is another session where we are looking at the book Lumat al-Itiqad by Muwafiq al-Din ibn Qudama Rahimahullah and in Last week's session, we looked at how the author was talking about the importance of a taslim or qubul in our aqidah to submit and to accept. And in today's session, we've got a continuation of that. And as we said before, we've got here in the Arabic practice and in the English as well uh, a subheading which has been put by the Sheikh Sheikh Muhammad and Sadr Thaymin. So he's saying here now, Kalam Aimat al Salaf. So today, inshallah, we're going to be looking at what the salaf of this ummah have said when it comes to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the second chapter after that, or the chapter after that, shall I say, At-Taghrib fi sunnah wa tahdhir min al-bid'ah. The command to stick to the sunnah and a warning from falling in innovations. Now, like we said last time, this comes within the context of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here, at the time of the salaf, this was a thing which distinguished the people of the sunnah from the people of bid'ah. So quite often, at that generation, at that time, the names and attributes of Allah was a decisive factor between the people of Sunnah and the people of Bid'ah. So what he is saying here, stick to the narrations and the understanding of the Salaf, that continues. Well, the context here is about the Sifat and the attributes of Allah, but it is broader than that. It's a principle that we have to understand that the author is giving us. Uh, here, Rahimahullah, he gives us three statements from the ulama, or four statements from the ulama of the salaf. Um, maybe a bit more than that. So he begins by saying, Qal Imam Abu Abdullah Ahmad ibn Hanbal, radiyallahu And he's used, radiyallahu for Imam Ahmad. And this is well known with the ulama who quote their imam from the madhabs. So quite often they would refer to Abu Hanifa, radiyallahu Imam al-Shafi, radiyallahu However, radiyallahu an is a dua and a supplication which is specific to the companions. And the ulama have said that there is no harm in you using it for other than the companions because it is a nice dua, may Allah be pleased with them, but this is something which is specific in its exclusive terms for the companions. So nobody should habitually use it for other than the companions. But if it's used for the ulama, the salaf, then there is no harm in that occasionally. So he says here, قال إمام أبو عبد الله أحمد بن محمد بن حمر رضي الله عنه في قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله ينزل إلى السماء الدنيا. What did Imam Ahmad say when it come to these narrations? So now he's got one narration here from the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم that Allah descends to the first سماء to the first sky. In another hadith he says صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله يرى في يوم القيامة. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah will be seen on the day of judgment. وَمَا أَشْبَعَ هَذِينَ أَحَادِيثِ And a hadith which was similar to this. What did Imam Ahmad say about this? So now here, continuing on from what we had last time of submission and acceptance, we had an ayah from the Qur'an. Do we have something from the ulama, the salaf, to confirm what was in the previous chapter? Or is this something that we're making up? Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he's saying here, نُؤْمِنْ بِهَا We believe in it, what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has told us of the attributes of Allah. And we affirm it. لا كيف ولا معنى. Now here, remember, we talked about this before. Imam Ahmad, he's quoting Imam Ahmad. This is the statement of Imam Ahmad. He said that there is no كيف to it. We don't know how. ولا معنى. And there is no meaning. Now remember, we've talked about this before. لا معنى is the way of the people of innovation. So if we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms for us that he has a face, for example. What does face mean? Face, face means face. How is the face? We don't know. And that's what Imam Muhammad is saying here. 
if a person was to read it as it is black and white, they'd be confused. And this is why we need the statements of the ulama to explain one another. He's saying here, la kayfu la ma'na. And this is similar to what Ibn Qudama said before as well. And this is something that some of the ulama have said that Ibn Qudama has fallen into tafweed because he is saying the same thing that Imam Ahmad said. So it's slightly unfair. And we've addressed this in the very first lecture. That Ibn Qudama, rahimahullah, is one of the Imams of Ahmad Sunnah. And he didn't fall into tafweed or making ta'wil or ta'til or anything like that. Changing the meaning of the attributes of Allah. He didn't do any of that. Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah is saying here, لا كيف ولا معنى There is no imagining it or asking how and there is no meaning to it. Number one, we have to understand what he is saying here with what he has said elsewhere. That way you can understand what he means. And the second meaning of لا كيف no معنى meaning the معنى of the way that they interpret and twist the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a summary what uh, Ibn Uthaymin has said and what Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said from before. So Imam Ahmad is saying here, whatever has come to us, we believe in it. We accept it. We don't ask how, we don't change the meaning. And we don't reject anything from that. And we know that whatever the Messenger of Allah وسلم, came with is the truth. We do not reject anything that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has told us about Allah. We do not attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than He has attributed to Himself. And we do not give a had for Allah, we do not give a ghaya to Allah. Now, had basically means we do not limit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no ghaya to Allah, meaning we do not resemble Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the four terminologies that we had last week. So the people of innovation when it comes to the attributes of Allah, either they reject or they resemble. And this is what Imam Ahmad is saying here, this is the belief of the Salaf. And remember the Salaf here, we're talking about the companions and the students of the companions and all of the four Imams. This is the Aqeel. What's the evidence for this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, ayah number 11, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is nothing like Allah. Nothing can be compared to Him. What was Samir Basir? Yet, He is the all-hearing, all-seeing. So now this is very important. Because in this one statement, you've got a negation as well as an affirmation. A lot of people, and I've even seen this just last week, I'm not going to mention which masjid it was, or, but they said, we believe in what Allah has believed in. It's very nice, but then there's one sentence where they basically said, we don't give a shape to Allah. We don't give a figure to Allah. And what they're trying to do here is by saying, if you say that Allah's got a face, if He's got hands, what they're saying is about us is that you are giving Allah a shape and you are giving Allah an image. So all these nice fancy words, if you were to look at it, you think, yeah, this is quite good. But in actual fact, these are the people of Ta'wil. So they're saying Allah is not like this and Allah is perfect and Allah is complete and Allah can't be limited, etc. And then they even quoted the ayah, but they stopped at Shay, laysa kamithli shay, there's nothing like Allah. That's negation. That's fine. There is nothing like Allah. Therefore, we don't make kayf of Allah. We don't make ta'wil of Allah. We don't do any of these things because you can't. Because there's nothing like Him. You just affirm what has come to you. Well, Samir Basir is the affirmation. <coughs> Allah hears in a manner that befits His majesty. Allah sees in a manner that befits His majesty. So this is the statement of uh, Imam Ahmed. And he goes on, Rahimullah, wa naqul kama qal. We say as he said, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa nasifu bima wasafa bihi nafsa. And we attribute to him what he has attributed to himself. Wa la yabluhu wasaf al wasifin. And we do not give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an attribute that people have attributed with him, where he hasn't done himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. نؤمن بالقرآن كله 
muhkamihi wa mutashabih. We accept everything in the Qur'an. We believe in any of it, all of it. And like we said last week, there are some ayat which are clear and these are known as the muhkam. And there are certain ayat which are unclear and these are known as the mutashabih. But it is unclear as Ibn Thaymin Allah said, and that unclarity is relative. And we don't want to repeat what he said because it might be unclear to one person but it will be clear to somebody else. So if it's unclear, what do we do? We go back to the muhkam to make that unclear clear. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْإِنْ And the, the people who are firmly established in knowledge, they say, كُلُّ مِنْ إِنْدِ رَبِّنَا They accept everything because they know the muhkam. And what might be mutashabih, unclear for certain people, they know that hey, this is clear for them. So this is what the Shaykh is saying here, rahimahullah. وَلَا نُزِيلْ أَنْهُ صِفَةً مِنْ صِفَاتِهِ and we do not remove any one of his attributes. Now this is very important because the people of Bid'ah, they might accept certain ones and they will reject others. Then he says, لِشُنَاعَةٍ شُنِّعَتْ Now this is a kind of interpretation or wording that he is using to basically refer to the people of Tafweed. Meaning these people have done something really bad, something really vile and foul in Reducing and stripping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala away from his attributes. So he is saying here, we do not take away from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like these people have done. And we do not transgress the Quran and the hadith. This is the full statement of Imam Ahmad and it's been quoted by Ibn Qayyim and others uh, from the ulama. This last bit, I'll just translate that. And we understand and we affirm what has come in the Qur'an, in the Sunnah, because the Messenger of Allah has come with the truth, and we affirm all of that that he has come with. So now here, as you can see here, this is within the context of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you take this as a methodology of your understanding of the religion, then you will be safe. Then you will be safe. Because here he is saying... That these people, they have either fallen into extremes, or they have questioned, or they have become lenient. And that is not the Sirat al Mustaqim. Here we have another statement from Muhammad ibn Idris. Who's Muhammad ibn Idris? Shafi. Imam al Shafi, good. So here we have, so the Qali Imam Abu Abdullah, Muhammad ibn Idris al Shafi, radi ra'an. Amantu billah, wa bima ja'an Rasulullah. Wait, let me say again. Amantu billah, wa bima ja'an anillah. على مراد الله وآمنت برسول وبما جاء عن الرسول على مراد الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. He is saying here, our aqida is to believe about Allah subhanahu wa taala with what Allah subhanahu wa taala has given us, with what Allah subhanahu wa taala has intended for us, and I believe with what the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم has given us, with what the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم has intended for us. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he then quotes Ibn Taymiyyah. And Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, says that this is the statement of Imam Shafi here, فَإِنَّهُ حَقٌ يَجِبَ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمِ اتِّقَالٌ This is the truth, and this is obligatory upon every single Muslim to believe in it. فَإِنَّهُ سَلَكَ سَبِيلَ السَّلَامَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ if the person does this, then he is upon the correct path, the path of salam and peace and submission in the dunya and in the akhirah. What's he saying here, Imam Shafi'i? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, we accept it. What he has told us, we accept it. We don't need to question, we don't need to liken, we don't need to reject, we don't need to ask how, we just accept it. And the same for when, when it comes to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the author goes on, Rahimahullah. Actually, there's another statement here that Ibn Taymiyyah has in the footnotes from Ibn Taymiyyah. And he says that Imam al-Shafi'i, Rahimahullah, has many statements like this. Many statements which confirm the methodology and the belief of the Salaf in this. So he gives another one, and this is taken from... Um, the works of Ibn Taymiyyah, as well as Ibn Qayyim, Ibn Qayyim quotes this as well. 
So Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he said, if a person has had the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come to him, then it becomes obligatory for this person to accept it. Qamat alayhi al-hujjah, and the proof has been established upon this person. فَإِنْ خَالَفَ بَعْدَ ثُبُوتِ الْحُجَّةِ عَلَيْهِ If a person was then to reject this methodology, especially when it comes to the names and attributes of Allah, فَهُوَ كَافِرُ Who's saying this? Imam al-Shafi'i. And again, when we've got one of the statements from one of these four imams from the generation of the Salaf, especially when it comes to aqidah and manhaj, you will not find one differing with the other. Like we've said this before, I mean, the four madhabs, they exist, but this is something in fiqh. When it comes to aqidah and manhaj and the things that we are studying here, they were all one in this. So Imam al-Shafi'i is saying, it is like Abu Hanifa said it, or Malik, or Ahmed has said it. The statement is quite long, then he goes on, rahimahullah. Let's go back to the book, وَأَلَا هَذَا And based on this, the Salaf and the Imat al-Khalaf, uh, the author is saying here, the ulama from the Salaf and the ulama from the Khalaf, meaning the Salaf, the first three generations, the companions, those after them, and those after them. And included in that are the four Imams. As well as the ulama that came after, رضي الله عنهم, may Allah be pleased with all of them. كُلُّهُمْ مُتَّفِقُونَ لَا إِقْرَارُ وَالْإِمْرَارُ وَالْإِثْبَاتِ All of them are on the aqeelah and are completely agreed that we accept and we affirm and we, I mean, same synonyms, but we accept it. لِمَا وَرَدَ مِنَ السِّفَاتِ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةِ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Whatever has come in the book of Allah when it comes to the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم مِنْ غَيْرِ تَعَرُّدِ لِتَعْوِيلِهِ without rejecting it with any kind of ta'wil. What's ta'wil? It's when you change the meaning. Your voice has changed. Sounds a bit more deeper. Say that again. <laughs> he literally just gave you the answer. What's ta'wil? When you change the meaning. The ayah in the Qur'an is there. <coughs> But they will say, no, we don't accept this meaning. Let's change the meaning. Even though, as you have just now seen, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends for us. This is what the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left for us. And this is exactly the same belief of all of the ulama from the Salaf. All three first generations. And like I said, we've seen, you see examples of this in different masajid. If you, if you go and you see and you pay attention, you will see it. Al-Targhib, <coughs> the command, the, uh, the desire to stick to the Sunnah. And a warning of falling into innovation. What is a Sunnah? Nuthaymin rahimahullah is saying here, in its linguistic form, it refers to a tariqah. A Sunnah is a path. Istilahan, technically, ما كان علينا بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحاب من أقيدة أو عمل. What the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was upon, what the companions were upon, in أقيدة or in action. Now this is very important because in this definition we learn that whatever the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم gave to us that's sunnah. I don't think any two Muslims would say otherwise. However. In this definition we now learn the importance of the things that we've been talking about right now, which is the ulama from the salaf, and again included in that are the first four imams, the, the imams of the madhab. What they have agreed upon is in conformance with the sunnah. So here the word sunnah is not just the practice of the messenger of Allah وسلم, but is the way that you understand Islam. So when a person says, such and such person is upon the sunnah, or I am a sunni, this is a terminology that's used all the time. What does that mean? Does that mean that I dye my hair because it's the way that the messenger was, or I wear white because this is what he preferred, I use miswak? These are all aspects of the messenger of Allah وسلم, that he had in his life. But the word sunnah, as the author is saying here, or as Sheikh Muhammad is saying here, is broader than that. The word sunnah in itself is aqeedah and the way that you understand Islam. 
And included in that is what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, left for us to follow, but included in that also are the Salaf of this Ummah. Okay, so that's Sunnah. What is a bid'ah? Linguistically, a shay'in muhdath. Something which has been innovated, something which has been brought about, something which is new. Technically, ma uhditha fi deen, anything which is introduced into the religion, ala khilaf ma kan alayhi sallam wa ashab min aqeela wa amal. So it's, the flip is completely the opposite. What something has been innovated into the religion, a person believes that this is part of the religion, a person does this action thinking that it is part of the religion or he's going to get some kind of reward, but it is in conflict with what the Messenger of Allah himself left behind for us to follow, or what the Salaf did, whether that's in aqeed or in action. So, we are now in the masjid. And I'm speaking into a microphone. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, never used a microphone in the masjid. Is this an innovation? Why not? Huh? Okay, that's one thing, but using this definition here. It's a means, that's his, what he's saying here. But look what he's saying. مَا أُحْدِثَ فِي الدِّينِ عَلَى خِلَافِ مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ نَبِيْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِنْ عَقِيدَ وَعَمَلَ what was introduced into the religion, which goes against what the Messenger of Allah and the companions were in, whether that's in aqeedah or whether that's a practical aspect of the religion. It's not ibadah. It's not being used to be part of the religion. I can do it without it. It's absolutely fine. Now this is something which is really important. One time I was having a conversation with a person uh, about the mawlid and a friend of mine who was drinking seven up. And the person who was trying to promote the Mawlid, celebrating the Prophet's birthday, he's saying, you guys are contradicting yourself. Why is he drinking 7-Up? The Prophet never drank 7-Up. So why is he drinking 7-Up? That means he's a, he's a Mubtada. He's doing innovation. See now, this is how reduced we have become because we've gone away from it. Because we've gone away from the Sunnah of the Prophet Why is this person wrong? Because this person is drinking 7-Up. It's got nothing to do with religion. He's not introduced into the religion saying that if I drink this, I'm following the Sunnah of the Prophet or if I drink this because I'll get some kind of reward. Ma uhditha fi deen, anything which is introduced into the religion, now you've included it as part of the Sharia, but the Messenger of Allah Wasallam never did it, or the companions never did it, in aqeedah or amal. Now this is very important. The religion is split into two. The Sharia is split into two. The whole of the religion is split into two. Aqeedah and amal. Amal is flexible. This is why you've got four madhabs in actual fact. You've got more than four madhabs, but most of them died. This is flexible. If a person prays in this manner and a person prays in another manner, as long as he is following evidence and he is following ishtihad from one of the ulama, then you can't be strict on that person. This is the methodology of the salaf. So that's one aspect of the sharia. In that there is innovation as well. You need to have evidence, you need to have a scholar. If you were to do something which had no knowledge, no ilm, no evidence, no sheikh before you that is telling you that you should, then that's an innovation. So don't get me wrong on that. But when it comes to aqeedah, the aqeedah aspect of it has to be one way. There can't be, there is no ishtihad in it. There are no multiple madhabs in it. So this is why the sheikh is saying here, this is sunnah. Ittiba' al-sunnah, following the sunnah, ma kana alayhi nabi sallallahu wa sallam min aqeedah or amal. So now the religion is split, the sharia is split into two parts, amal and aqeedah. And the same thing when it comes to bid'ah. Here we've got uh, three or four statements from the ulama the salaf that Imam Ibn Qudam rahimahullah mentions when it comes to incitement for us to follow the sunnah, encouragement for us to stick to this methodology and to be warned against bid'ah. So he says, وَقَدْ أُمِرْنَا We have been commanded بِإِفْتِقَالِ لِآثَارِهِمْ To be sufficed with the narrations that have come from them. وَاهْتِدَى بِمَنَارِهِمْ And to uh, guide it by the lanterns, by the, the, the light that they have shown us. وَهُذِّرْنَا الْمُحْدَثَاتِ And we have been 
warned against innovating. And we have been informed that if a person was to innovate, then this is the deviation. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said in a hadith which has been reported by Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi ibn Majah, and classed the Sahiba, many from the ulama. And if you look at the footnotes here, he brings a list of references that the ulama have uh, used to talk about its authenticity. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Alaykum bi sunnati. Upon you is to follow my sunnah. Now, what does that mean? Again, is it we're talking about the miswak and dyeing your hair and wearing white clothes? I mean, this is one aspect. This is the amal aspect of it. But the sunnah is also the aqidah aspect of it, the manhaj aspect of it, the religion as a whole. He is saying here, follow my sunnah. And the sunnah of the khulafa, al-rashidin, al-mahdiin, min ba'di. The four rightly guided khulafa who will come after me. Addu alayha bin nawajiz. And hold on to it, even if you have to cling on to it with your teeth. So if I was going to take that away from him, which I'll probably do when we go home, what he's going to do is he's going to try to hold on to it. But when I'm trying to pull it off him, he's probably going to try to bite onto it to make sure that I don't pull it off him. Isn't that right? So this is what we do. Hold on to it. So the Messenger of Allah said, even if you have to bite onto it, make sure you do not let this go. Because if you let this go, it's over. Why? Look at the next bit. وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدِثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ Be warned about the newly invented matters. The newly invented matters. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Every newly invented matter is an innovation. وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovated matter is a misguidance. And another narration in Nisa'i وَكُلُّ دَلَاتٍ فِي النَّارِ And all deviation is in the fire. Look how he broke out for us صلى الله عليه وسلم. Here's your sunnah. This is your religion. Here's the khulafa. They've completed what I came with. خلاص that's enough. Now, this is what the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم told us to stick to. Is it possible that the ulama, especially from the four imams, went against that? In aqeedah? In manhaj? It's not possible. Because he's saying, stick to this is my sunnah. This is the religion. Even if you have to buy onto it, stick to it. Therefore, if you're not on this way, then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you're on something else, which is new. It's not what I came with. And all of those paths are a deviation. And all of them lead to the fire. May Allah protect us. Ibn Masood said, اتبعوا ولا تبتدعوا فقد كفيتم Follow, do not innovate because you have been sufficed. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, uh, again he says, he says, قف هيث وقف القوم Stop where they stopped. فإنهم عن علم وقفوا Because on knowledge, that's where they stopped. وَبِبَصَرٍ نَافِذٍ كَفُّوا And because of a deep insight, they refrained. وَهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَشْفِهَا كَانُوا أَقْوَىٰ And their insight was stronger than ours. وَبِفَضْلُ كَانَ فِيهَا أَحْرَىٰ And if there was any kind of virtue, then they would have been the people who were the very first to attain that virtue. Now this is very important. Very important. And this is the time that we live in right now. Whether they say this openly, but in generations that came before, they said it openly. They said that the companions, they are of a particular virtue, but they weren't very clever. Audhu billah. But they actually say this. The people of deviation, they actually say this. We are the people of civilization, we are the people of Hadara, and we've moved forward, and now it's the 21st century, not 21st century, we are... So they've got their virtue, but we need to change their religion. Here, Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Now here, it's very important for us to understand. Umar bin Abdul Aziz is one of the ulama, the salaf. And it's well known that this man was a man of justice. To the point that during his caliphate, he completely eradicated all forms of oppression. All forms of oppression, he eradicated it. From now, you have to look how big the ummah was at that time as well. All the way to China... From China all the way to Spain. No dhulm whatsoever. And the proof for that also is that within a couple of years of his reign, uh, rahimahullah, there was no one to give zakat to. Nobody was poor. That's how justice had spread everywhere. So they had to store. So he now sits with the ulama. What do we do all this money for zakat? 
Islamically, the government collects the zakat and the government distributes. So now we've got all this money in the treasury, what do we do with it? So now this is a masala that they have to think about. They say, okay, now let's, let's hold on to the next year because maybe we'll need it for next year, etc. So now this is one thing that he was well known for, his justice. Look what he is saying here. Stop where they stopped. They stopped upon knowledge. They had an insight. They had a deeper understanding. And if there was any kind of virtue, they were the very foremost of attaining that virtue. For in kultum, and if you said, hadith about them, that something was innovated or brought into the religion after them, there is nothing that is innovated or brought into the religion except that the people who innovated it have gone against that guidance that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, told us to stick to. And they have left their sunnah. So now here, look, he's using sunnah and he's attributing it to them. The sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was carried on by the salaf of the ummah. He is saying here, when you innovate, not only are you rejecting the Messenger of Allah وسلم, but you're rejecting all three first generations. وَلَقَدْ وَصَفُوا مِنْهُ مَا يَشْفَى وَتَكَلَّمُوا مِنْهُ بِمَا يَكْفِي فَمَا فَوْقَهُمْ مُحَسِّرْ What they have told us is good for us. What they have uh, informed us of is sufficient. And anything which goes beyond that, anything which has gone beyond that, then that person has exceeded. He's exceeded the bounds in a negative way. وَمَا دُونَهُمْ مُقَصِّرٌ And anyone who leaves anything out, then that person is deficient. لَقَدْ قَصَّرَ عَنْهُمْ قَوْمٌ فَجَفَوْ There are a group of people that left their way and they then fell in to becoming extreme. Or lenient, should I say. لَقَدْ قَصَّرَ عَنْهُمْ قَوْمٌ فَجَفَوْ They became negligent, so they became lenient. They became negligent of the religion, then they became lenient. Think about that. Yeah, this is what's happening today as well. They became neg- negligent of the religion of Allah, so then it just became an issue. Oh, if you do it, it's okay. If you don't do it, it's okay. وَتَجَاوَزْهُمْ آخَرُونَ فَغَلُوا And there are another group of people who went beyond what they went beyond, so they fell into extremism. وَإِنَّهُمْ فِي مَا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ but they were on the right path. They were balanced, and that is the guidance, which is uh, the mustaqim, which is the steadfast one. Then the author brings a statement from Abu Amr, Abdurrahman al awzai Now this statement here, uh, there is a similar statement from Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. He said, Alayka bi athar man salaf. Upon you is to follow the narrations of those people that came before you, meaning the Salaf. Wa in rafadakum nas, even if the people were to reject you. Wa iyak wa arat rujal, and be warned about the opinions of people. Wa in zakhrafu, wa in zakhrafu laka bil qawl, even if they were to make it beautified, their theorizing, their politics, the whatever it might be, if they are going against the athar of the religion, then reject that and stick to the salaf and what they came with. Last narration here, now this is actually a debate that took place in front of one of the khulafa. Here, the author, he makes mention of a person called Muhammad ibn Abdurrahman al-Adrami. Now, al-Muthaymin, rahimahullah, he said, I tried to look up who this person is and I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. Muhammad ibn Rahman al-Adrami. He said that there are three possibilities and then he gives them here on page 46 of the Arabic. Whatever the case, he is one of the ulama that Muwafiq al-Din ibn Qudama has used. Now, this person has a debate with an innovator in front of the ruler. So the innovator has promoted some kind of innovation. The Imam, Muhammad al-Adrami, he says, okay, what you are saying here now, did the Messenger of Allah وسلم, do it? Did Abu Bakr do it? Did Umar do it? And did Uthman do it? And did Ali do it? Radiallahu anhu So now here, we've taken the statement that he has said, stick to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the salaf. This is the religion that they are upon. Here we've got a practical 
toing and froing. This person has innovated something new into the religion. So our Imam here, Muhammad al-Adrami, he says, okay, this thing that you have now innovated into religion, did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do it? Did any of the four Khulafa do it? So that person said, no, they didn't do it. So Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman al-Adrami, rahimahullah, he says, okay, if they didn't do it, does that mean that you know something that they didn't know? So now he pauses. So he says, no. They knew about it. But they didn't do it. <laughs> they knew about it, called Ali Muha, but they didn't do it. So the same thing about the Mawlid, etc. So now, as you can see, there's a lot of backtracking. Okay, so then Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman al Adrami says, okay, if they didn't do it, but they knew about it, but they didn't do it and teach it to us, how is it possible that you have that knowledge without it being transmitted from them? The man had no response after that. So now either they did it, sorry, either they didn't do it, then you have to admit it, that you've got something which is wrong. Or you're doing something that they didn't do. So now the second possibility is, is that they knew about it or they didn't know about it. And now you need to answer that question. If they didn't know about it, then again, you go back to the first situation, which is, now you innovated. Or you're going to say that I know better than them. Astaghfirullah. Or the third situation is where you say, okay, they knew about it, but they didn't do it. Okay, then how did it get to you then? So this man was complete. Faqal al-Khalifa, so then the, the Amir that was there, and he said, لا وسع الله على من لم يسع ما وسع أهم. The person will not get any kind of knowledge for whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to give that person knowledge and understanding to. And this now concludes uh, what we have here from the statement of Ibn Qudama. Uh, rahimahullah. And in today's session we have seen the importance of sticking to the methodology of the Salaf al Salih. Here he is saying, Rahimahullah, that there is no difference of opinion. Especially because we have ayat in the Quran and a hadith from the Messenger of Allah وسلم, where they have told us that this is the Sirat al Mustaqim. And that understanding is confirmed by the Salaf al Salih. If a person sticks to this, he'll be upon the right path. He will be following the religion as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has intended it for us and as the Messenger of Allah sallam, has told us to follow. And this is the way of the four Imams and the companions and everyone from the first three generations. But if a person was to leave that, then they are falling into innovations. And if a person was to think, well, innovations are not that bad, well, you've seen the hadith on the Messenger of Allah sallam. He has said all of it is a misguidance and all of it is leading astray. And we have seen statements here from uh, some of the Salaf where they have given us the attitude that the Muslim should have. Stick to what they have taught us, stick to their understanding of the religion, practice as they practice the religion because they are better. They had more knowledge. Allah elevated them, so be like them. And then you have seen the catch-22 situation of a person who doesn't stick to that. Either he is doing something that they didn't do, so he has to admit it. Or he is doing something which he feels that he's got more knowledge, then you can't say that either. Or you are doing something that you feel that they had knowledge of, but you are doing it without any kind of narrations for it. So how did it get to you? Makes no sense. The next uh, chapter, he is now going to begin talking about the sifat of Allah. So now he's going to begin describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given himself attributes in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah, and that's where, inshallah, we'll continue from next week. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us all tawfiq and success, and he keeps us upon the Surat al-Mustaqeem. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is pleased with us and not angered with us, and he takes us in the best of states, and he gives us the best of resurrections that he has ever given to anyone of his servants with the Prophets and the Messengers <coughs> and the Siddiqun and the Shuhada. Allahu a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. بارك الله فيك. ها وستأويل. هو معنى سبب فات ما أسكنه.